What's going on guys? Today I'll be going through the review of an EasyCheck onboard diagnostic tool that's made for um, OBD2 compliant vehicles and that's vehicles that are 96 model year and newer. So if your car or truck is um, 95 year model or older then, then this will not work. This is made by the company LaunchTech and they say they provide uh, technical support for the life of uh, for as long as you have the product. Now, they also say it supports seven different languages. I'm not sure what those languages are, but I'm sure you can find that out from their webpage. And I have the, the website and the Facebook page both linked down below. If you want, if you have any questions that you want to send their way, please direct those towards them, as uh, I, I, I most likely will not be able to answer them. Uh, but from the uh, from the manufacturer, you know, they say that this works with 72 car brands, uh, does emissions readiness tests and also generates a report so you can look at the report and give that report to customers if you have customers if you're providing this support for customers I'm, i can't speak to how reliable this would be over a long period of time but the initial review of this is it's not a bad it's not a bad setup it's basically just a bluetooth transmitter that transmits to um, an app that you would install on your smartphone whether that be uh, an android or an iphone it does not work when on the on windows phones um if they do have an app for it for the Windows phones, they don't say on the back of the packaging here. Uh, but the quickest way to install it is just to scan the QR code, and I've got that. Um, I'll have that going in the bottom left portion of the screen here. Uh, but you scan the QR code, and it takes you straight to the um, to the Android or the Apple um, marketplace, and you can it just installs that way. If you don't have a QR code reader on your phone, then uh, you can just navigate to it through your uh, through the the Apple or the Android market. Now I'll be going through the functionality of this a little bit later. Uh, you just have to set up an account, which uh, from what it looks like, it's a free account. Also it's supposed to show uh, live engine data. So we're gonna run through that a little bit. And then it also says it generates a report. So I'm gonna try to do that also. Um, so those are the main points that I wanna hit in this video. Um, I'll be plugging this into a friend of mine's vehicle who's got a check engine light on his car and clearing the check engine light, going through the different functions and everything available. But the uh, the carry case in this is pretty durable, I mean, as you can see, like after you take that cardboard out. So it's got some pretty heavy-duty plastic. Um, this is the this is the little Bluetooth transmitter that sends the signal to your phone, and then popping a little bottom cover out. Uh, a little mini manual, and there's also a QR code in here and some basic steps on how to set this up. Uh, super basic steps on how to set this up. Um, and then. In this little pouch, you have an activation code and a little serial number. So you have to enter this in the app. So whenever you install the app, you have to enter this in. Uh, this, you just have the activation code, and then I've already torn off the sides of this, but once you tear off the sides, you have another number on the inside. Enter the number in. Um, I'll have that. I'll have that going on the little screen capture thing that's on the bottom left of the screen here. Uh, but it's a pretty simple process. Altogether, it didn't really take that long to set all of this up. But now I'm going to take this outside and plug this into my friend's car and see what data we can get off of his uh, off of his computer. And right now we're looking at the driver's side footwell on the left side of the vehicle. Uh, this is an American models, and as you can see, the OBD port is right there, uh, so I can just plug this in. Sometimes they're facing up, and sometimes more on the right side of the footwell, um, and then. I know the manual actually pointed out sometimes in the center console, but I have not seen that. I'm just gonna plug this in and now connect the app. Okay, now obviously in order to read the check engine light that's uh, that's on the uh, that's on the car, if there are any check engine lights, uh, I'm gonna put the key in and then turn it to the ignition on position. You don't have to start the car, but it does have to be in the ignition on position. If you want to read the live engine data, then you do have to start the car. So right now, I'm just going to go in to open the app. And the OBD2 diagnostics is, uh, diagnosis is what I'm going to go to in the top right part of the screen. <clears throat> we also noticed there was a little flashlight button in the very, very top right. I checked that out. That works. That enables your phone's flashlight. At least it did on mine. Now I have the option to clear fault codes, re-fault codes, or view data streams. The car is not on right now, so I can't view the data stream. Um, but if I want to read the fault code, sorry, no data. Okay, oh, there we go. So it's picking up code uh, P0420 and P2716, uh, and they're both current and unsettled codes. So 
the current and unsettled is terminology I haven't seen before, but I would imagine it's not that dissimilar from um, pending codes and hard codes. So the hard codes are, are codes that are um, recognized as a problem, and the pending codes, or what this is calling is unsettled codes, is more of a, is something that the, the car's computer is trying to discover whether or not that's a problem or not. So it's reading those two types of codes, and that's good. Um, trying to okay, so I can't click on the uh, either one of the 420 or the 2716 codes to see more information. Some um, some scanners that I've used that use your phone, they give you the option of searching the web. Uh, this one doesn't, so that's that's not a not a big thing. You can use Google and go and search that. Um, so that's read fault codes. So I want to clear fault codes. Uh, clear fault codes failed. I might have to start the car. So, uh, I'll do that and then I'll check data streams also. And if you heard the rattle whenever I started the car, it sounded like it was coming from beneath the seat, which is around where the catalytic converter is, which makes sense when I had that uh, P420 code, it said catalyst, um, catalyst something. Now that is a problem with the catalytic converter efficiency and the rattle in that just confirms that the car's computer is reading a problem with this car being that it needs a new catalytic converter. So now I have the engine running. I'm going to clear fault codes, cleared fault codes successfully. Okay. And now I'm going to go to read fault codes again. And that 2716 has popped up again. Um, and that check engine light's back on the dash. So uh, that code's not wanting to clear on this. Not a big deal, it's just a persistent, uh, it's a larger issue. But now I'm going to go in and view data streams. Um, it doesn't show gauges, it just shows actual data values, but um, engine RPM 1100, yeah, so that's, that's correct. Engine coolant temperature 46, 47 Celsius. Uh, that's not registering on the gauge yet, still, uh, still warming up though, it's a cold engine. Uh, throttle position. So it changes a little bit, it doesn't change very much. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of data here. Um, oxygen, sensor, oxygen sensor voltage was very useful. Um, I, I prefer to see a graph with that because I like to see how, how much it goes up and down, but this doesn't seem like it provides a graph function. And then let's see what VIN does. Okay, VIN code. So VIN code is not supported with uh, this model. So right now, I want to generate a report. Oh, does it automatically. Um, and then it says inspection result, pressure control solenoid, D electrical. Um, and it's just showing me diagnostic code. They didn't pick up the 420 code because I cleared that one, I guess. But it's just showing me the, uh, the live data, the same thing that I just view with the live data. So you can uh, print out a report for customers if you want to. And then it would provide vehicle information Inspection organization, um, I was playing around in the app trying to determine where to fill in this information and I couldn't find anything built into the app. Since you do have to sign up for an account, there might be a way to do that on the website, but I don't think that's a big deal personally. Um, if you do, if you are using this for business purpose, purposes, I wouldn't use uh, this, uh, this device. It does look like they built it for using for a business, just looking at this, um, this report, but... Um, there are there are other options that give you a more detailed report uh, than this that you could provide to your customers. Still, this is a good for the price. This is a this is a really good. Uh, this shows a lot of good data. And then I am emissions. Let me do that that I am emissions test. Okay, so it goes into the different common I am monitors, spark ignition, engine I am monitors. So it shows the different things that are available for the car. Ones that aren't supported, it looks like they have an X. Uh, secondary air system monitoring, so that's not um, not supported on this car. And then it shows the, the mill, <laughs> mill indicator, the malfunction indicator lamp. And it shows that being on. OBD2 diagnostics. Uh, it's generating. Okay, well, it generated a report again. I didn't really, I don't really care that it did that. 
generated a few reports earlier when I was playing around with this. Um, so that, that's why it shows why it shows so many. I was messing with this yesterday. Anyway, uh, that's it for this. Uh, this is. It seems like a pretty detailed little app. What I don't like is I don't like it how uh, they want you to sign up for an account with it. That would that would keep me from buying this. Um, and then I'm still hearing that catalytic converter rattle. It's at 420. Um, that 420 code. Uh, I do like how portable and compact this is, but at the same time, it is small and it would be easy to lose. I could easily drop this between the seat, uh, but then that is why it does have a carry case. You put it in a little plastic carry case, put it in the pouch, maybe keep it in your glove box. Be sure to check them out in the description below. They've got their website and their Facebook page, and they say they, they, meant, they uh, provide lifetime technical support to their customers. So be sure to check them out and uh, check out the product pretty thoroughly. If you are considered buying it, read other reviews, and uh, don't just take my word for it. Uh, read other people's reviews. And, uh, but I, from what I've seen so far, it does do the job. Um, there are cheaper options out there, but uh, you get what you pay for, really. The, ones, the cheaper ones that I've used, um, I've read a lot of reviews on where they'll shut off a car um, this one hopefully they don't have that it doesn't have that functionality but if you're driving around with it connected I have heard of of these devices uh, shutting off the vehicle not sure if that is something that this one will do but I would keep that in mind and not plug this in and drive it around drive the car around with this in use anyway that's it for this uh, thanks a lot for watching make sure you like subscribe uh, comment your ideas and, and uh, maybe the, uh, the check engine diagnostic tool that you're using. Uh, just leave a little comment down in the description below. Uh, thanks a lot and God bless you guys.